Welcome to another episode of The Jersey. I'm your host, Darian Kelly. Now, today I have a very, very special guest, uh, Jeremy Henderson, founder of Synergy 7. How's it going, man? Man, it's beautiful, man. It's a wonderful day in hot Houston, Texas. <laughs> That's one of the things I got to get used to, man, is just the yeah. heat. Like, I, like we was talking about off camera, like, right. You know, Baltimore guy. I'm used to the four seasons. Oh yeah. You know, get to Dallas. Yeah. You know, I, that's my first introduction. But now I'm yeah. really like, I'm really in it now. Look, man, I grew up right outside of Chicago in Aurora, Illinois, and went to Florida and M University. Right. And when I got down to Tallahassee, just immediately got acclimated to the heat. Right. When I came back home, it was like I don't even know why people live here. It's so cold. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that. Like a lot yeah. of people, like they can't, like I can't do the cold. Like even when it get cold down here, like. Yeah. I don't even you like. Oh, do you, it no you, more. Yeah, I don't want to do it. You I don't can't do, do it. it. It's, it's unnecessary. <laughs> right. You have options now right. on where you can live. For sure. And I prefer to live in a warmer climate. Houston, though, is extremely hot. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. extremely hot. It's but joke. still better than negative degree temperature. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, just tell me. I guess what's been like, kind of catch me up. Like, what's been going on? Like the past couple of months, month and yeah. Like, how's the summer been for you? No, the summer's been good, man. The past couple of months have been really exciting for right. us. To be honest with you, I mean. We've been making a lot of headway um, in terms of identifying and building up relationships with potential customers. Okay. Like our business model, uh, we sell, you know, J sleeves to parents of youth athletes. Right. But those parents are already, you know, customers of AAU organizations, right. camps, competitive leagues, development leagues. So this entire summer, the start of it, um, really kind of going back to like that April time frame right. has been just focused on trying to establish the relationships with the business that already have mm. those parents as existing customers. Right. And so we've had some real good success, man. We've also been like beating the pavement, trying to identify good investors that right. are a good fit for us. Okay. Uh, and so we've had some success there. So, I mean, you know, we're really looking forward to, to just finishing the summer strong. Right. Uh, but then just scaling the business, man. But it's been a great start. It's been a great start to the summer. Absolutely. And, Tell us, I guess, it's just like this is a jump off point, like yeah. a little bit about some E7 and just the J Sleeve itself. Yeah. Like, what's the story behind it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, really, the J Sleeve came before Synergy 7. Okay. So, I'll tell you the story okay. about the J Sleeve, man. So, I grew up right outside of Chicago, right. uh, was born watching the Bulls, watching Michael Jordan, oh, just wow. fell in love with the game, okay. man. And so, um, played basketball, got uh, made all state in high school. Got recruited to play at Florida a &M University. And so played there um, for four years. When I graduated, I uh, started coaching and training immediately just to give back you right. know, to the community because what was done for me. Mm -hmm. So I got two boys. Okay. They're now 12 and 8. And so my oldest like was drawn to basketball early. He saw me watching the games, and so he kind of got real into it. And so as I was like coaching him, his friends, as I was training them, I just saw this need, like, man, every time we come into the gym, y'all so worried about breaking somebody's ankles. Right. But the 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 fundamental nature of shooting the ball, right. y'all just are a little bit behind on mm. that. And so I just kind of saw, like, every time they would come into the gym, they would forget right. what we worked on, right. kind of like the previous session. Now they're young. Right. But at the same time, those are, like, formidable years, right? right? So I just kind of sat back. I had a fuel band on at the time. Mm. Nike had made this fuel band at the time. And um, I was just thinking, like, man, how could I help them get better? How could I help them accelerate their performance, reach their peak, uh, you know, continuously? And I looked down at that fuel band and I said, man, I wish this thing would count the number of shots I took and tell me how I how I actually was shooting the ball. Right. That way I could, get, you know, share with them and they could use it and I could just become a better coach. Right. And I could have them become their own self coach. Mm. We can monitor one another. You know, we can connect within the world of uh, connectivity. And so I was like, you know what? It's got to be something like that online. Mm. So I went online, searched for it, couldn't find nothing online. Oh, wow. Right? Nothing that would do what I was thinking in my head right. my Nike fuel band should do. Mm. Um, so I contacted my network mm. at Florida a and and I said, hey, I'm thinking about building this product. First of all, can it be done? Mm. And so I had guys on my team at FAM that were electrical engineers uh, and computer programmers. So it just worked out like you just tapped into the network and it... I just tapped into the network and asked them like, is it possible to build this? Mm. And they're like, it's gonna take you some time, but it can it's be possible. built. Right. I said, okay, look, that's all I gotta hear. <laughs> right. So then I, again, typed right back into the network mm. and uh, one of the co-founders, Jason Campbell, who's in a, who got his marketing degree from Florida a and Okay. I said, hey, man, do you think we would be able to sell this? He was like, man, let's go right now. 
Mm. Let, let's let's get it rolling now. Wow. So that started the J Sleep, mm. right? Um, we did some other things too, like we went out to the NBA Summer League just to get some product validation from right. like that top level user. Right. And our feedback that we got when we got when we would go to these uh these types of events was Man, I think that's fire, man. Like, do you have it now? Can I use it now? And it's right. like, it's coming. But the fact that you say you would use it, that's good. Validation. Right. Um, so we started building it, man. Mm -hmm. um, started working with the company here in Houston, uh, Parishion Technology Labs at the time. They built a prototype. So what we were learning about muscle memory, mm -hmm. you know, me and the team, we were like, you know what? We could actually apply this tech mm -hmm. across a lot of different areas. Right. We have a company bigger than just the J Sleeve. Mm. So that's how Synergy 7 came about mm. because, you know, Synergy being all things working together and the number seven uh, kind of being known as being the number for perfection. Mm. We said, man, we want all these things to work together to help us strive for perfection, strive for greatness, help right. athletes achieve peak performance, help programs um, understand the competitive landscape. Right. Just everything kind of put together around sports and science. So that's how we started Synergy 7. Okay. And, you know, you mentioned a few times, you know, and, you know, and just kind of catching up and even just talking about your story behind the J sleeve, you know, you played basketball at uh, yeah. FAMU. Yeah. I guess for you, like, what were some of the lessons, you know, because it's, it's a different game now. Yeah. Right? It's way, yeah, it way different. It's way it different. Is. It's different than the old days where, you know, we, you know, they, they, they call it like a bully ball. They used to, yeah. You know, you used to get abused if you drove in the lane. Absolutely. You know, so I know you come from a different era of yeah. playing ball. So yeah. what was, what were some of the lessons that you were able to obtain from playing basketball yeah. that allow for you to, to, to navigate this yeah. world as a, as an entrepreneur, as a family? Yeah. Like what were some of those lessons you were able to take? Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, you're absolutely right. Like growing up, you know, in and around Chicagoland area, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody hooped. Right. Like and, and honestly, if you had to get a run, if you wanted to get a run in, mm. you had to come with a different type dog if you wanted to continue to stay oh, yeah. on the court. Right. So like that, that resiliency, that diligence, that focus, that dedication, those are just like some of the softer skills you build up mm -hmm. as you're developing yourself like right. into a player. And so like in Chicago, during my area, Chicago land area, mm -hmm. uh, during my era, Right. It was a lot about slashing, like mm. who had the handles, who right. could finish around the rim. Mm. Uh, we were more slashers than mm. like shooters, mm. even though we obviously had guys that could knock down jumpers. Right. But right. the game, the style of it was, mm. you know, getting, you know, getting busy, like right. being able to handle right. it, get to the rack and finish. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so when I got to Florida A&M, right. like the number one three point shooter in the country right. during the 0304 season was mm. Terrence Woods. OK, he beat out J.J. Reddick. I played behind Terrence Woods my entire career at Florida AM. and And this dude could shoot lights out. Wow. I mean, I've seen him make 94 out of 100 threes, like, a few times. Ooh. He could just shoot the rock, right? right? And so, like, just to be honest, like, I didn't get a whole lot of playing time right. like that exactly. because this dude is just phenomenal. Right. You know what I mean? And he was just a better shooter than I was. Right. And so, like, watching him over the years really kind of stressed the importance of, like, being able to just knock down the shot, like, right. whenever. Right. Um, and so some of those skills is what helped me now as a coach, as a trainer, uh, the softer skills, just in terms of the diligence, right? Like, mm. I was playing behind the number one three-point shooter in the country, right? So, but I had a love for the game, which wasn't going to allow me to quit because I wasn't contributing the way that I wanted to. Mm. And in the startup world, it's the same type of mentality that you have to have. Like, you're going to run into a lot of failures uh, when you're starting a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, failures from milestones you think you should achieve uh, in, the, in the development of the product, uh, failures in terms of trying to identify investors, uh, getting investors, uh, failures of trying to build strategic partnerships. Right. But if you know that you have a sound business mm -hmm. and you shake enough trees, you're going to get some leaves to fall. And it's that diligence. It's that work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, it's the focus on, you know, achieving your strategy and your milestones that you learn as you're growing to develop as a basketball player mm -hmm. that you can apply uh, as a startup entrepreneur. Absolutely. And, and you know, just kind of going back to you know, what it was like for you in the Chicago land area is very yeah. similar in Baltimore because, you know, yeah. basketball is, I mean, you, you go outside of your, your house, there's a basketball court around yeah. the corner, you know, and it's very, you know, very physical, um, you know, and then you talk about, you know, transitioning into FAMU mm -hmm. where, 
when you have to be behind someone who's a great shooter, you got to be patient. Yeah. You know, a lot of it's really hard, not even just, you know, just people like understanding like patience, understanding like, you know, when my time comes, like how I'm going to see this opportunity. Yeah. You also learn how to prepare as well. Absolutely. So your preparation gets, Absolutely. gets to a whole nother level because you only get so many yeah. know, opportunities. Absolutely. So it's, um, I, I would say like those, those traits are so, so important. They, they, trans, yeah. they transfer over. Um, they transfer over to a lot of yeah. areas of life, man. I mean, because when Terrence, finally, when he graduated, yeah. um, I felt like, I was like, you know what? Cool. It's finally my turn to kind of step up. Right. And before the season, I broke my hand mm. and it didn't really heal right. So I didn't get a chance to finish that last season. Right. right? But the, again, the diligence, having the, having the mental toughness, mental fortitude, mm. And the and the willingness to be flexible with what you want to be able to do in life and can contribute to mm -hmm. life, uh, didn't put me in like I was. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was in a dark place for a long time because my entire life, I love basketball. Oh, I always had a chance to play, right? And I had an opportunity at this time to finally shine, mm -hmm. and I break my hand, um, and I went into a dark place. However, you know the community around me, family, friends having the mental fortitude that got developed in me when I was a kid up right. until when I was an athlete at that collegiate level, uh, it, it kind of reset me to say, you know what? We've succeeded in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. We can concede, succeed in other areas. We just got to stay focused, stay diligent, mm -hmm. and just grind. Yeah. And, and a lot of, and I think it's, you know, when you talk about being in the dark, like, and I've never been, I've never, I was fortunate to like never had like any like major injuries. Right. But I would hear so many stories of just, you know, basketball play just athletes in general yeah. having to bounce back from that right. bounce back from injuries right especially in the time like you said like you know this like it was your, it was your shot you know this is yeah. your, your season yeah and you broke your hand so it, it's when you when you know how to navigate through that level of adversity right i feel like you're more pre you're prepared for pretty much right. anything like nothing can really sway you in a sense it really can't man just because that mental fortitude mental right. toughness and honestly, it's those core values that, that my family built up. Right. Me. Like, yeah. hey, you love basketball. We love get it. it. Right. You need to go get that education and be equally as focused on academics as you all are in athletics. Sure. So, you know, so we strive to achieve excellent academic and athletic excellence. Mm. And so as athletes, that's a message that's super important that I stress to the kids that I coach and train is right. look at the number of people who play NBA basketball, overseas basketball, mm. uh, you know, division one, two, three, college in general. Mm. The numbers are small, mm. but it's a passion that you have, so you should definitely try to reach that goal. Right. But just make sure your academics are straight and top notch. That way, just in case you don't reach that goal, because I'm a living product and I haven't reached that goal, you got to have something to be able to fall back on. For sure. And then also, too, you know, the message to athletes as well, like if, you know, having an education is one thing, but also knowing that the same amount of time and, and yes. effort that you put into playing ball, yeah, you need you can apply that to you know leveraging your education, leveraging your degree, Absolutely. you know, because I think that some you know Absolutely. some players, some athletes that I know, when they transition out of playing sports, it's almost as if they kind of lose that edge, they yeah. lose the 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 same kind of a skill set that they had right. that they apply. They don't really apply it to anything, even though they have the degree. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. they don't understand like it's the same thing. It's, it's the just same thing. You're not, you're not keep that enough. competitive edge, man. right? You can if you're a compet those that are competitors. Yeah. If you are a competitor, right. you can keep that competitive edge in right. any type of environment. Right. And but that's why it's important for, you know, the gen the younger generation of athletes to know like the soft skills that you're building up mm. are applicable out off the court. Right. Uh, extremely applicable off mm. the court. The competitive uh the competitive edge, the need to be resilient, right. the need to stay focused. Um you know, the mindset to just continuously practice and mm. try to perfect your craft. Mm. Uh, so that's the message that we share with a lot of the kids that we coach and we train. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, for you prior to prior to the J, J sleeve, or I don't know if this was around the same time, but prior, I think, to starting Synergy 7, you were a consultant, I believe, yeah. for, for a number of years. Um, what was that mind shift change? Because I know it's not easy. Um, I, I think that well, what I'm saying, kind of preface my question. Yeah. There are a lot of like young people out there, young professionals, or not even just young professionals, just professionals in general, yeah. who we're living in a time where everyone wants to transition, right. you know, transition out of, you know, whether it's an industry, whether it's a job. Right. And so take me back to like when, you know, you, you know, you were, you know, looking to transition out of consulting to having your own company. What was that mindset shift? And like, how were you able to, 
make that transition? Like, how did it, how did, what was your It was actually like? just an expansion, I think, of the mindset instead of just a shift because, right. you know, what what I was doing uh, at the time, um, you know, when I started the J Sleeve was business strategy. Okay. Right? Business strategy, uh, capital allocation, mm -hmm. um, and how to try to figure out, you know, how a business plan actually needs to run, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. That was really what I was doing. Okay. And so it's very applicable to starting a business. Right. Right. And so really it was just like an expansion of that mindset to say, okay, well, if I know how to kind of do this at one particular level, right. can I do this on my own level? Right. Uh, and the answer is yes, right? Mm. So those skills are very transferable. Mm. Uh, so the transition was um, not even really a transition. It was just more of an expansion mm. of, what I was, of what I was already doing, mm. just applying it in one particular area versus the other. Mm. Um, and so that's one of the things too, like, Life is a great teacher, man. Like things will build upon each other, mm -hmm. and then sometimes things just need to fall off. Right. And so in this particular case, it was one of those where well, we could actually add this in addition to what you are doing right. because there's a market out there for it. The skill set has been built uh, in that consultant space of understanding business strategy mm -hmm. and allocation to really run a business. So without it. We wouldn't have been as successful as we are in the J Sleeve without that foundation. Right. Um, because again, the skills are very transferable. The concept of building a business is 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 uh is transferable. Like it doesn't matter what it is. It's a J Sleeve, it's a widget, right? You know, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. The fundamental core of building a business will always be the same. Mm. What is your strategy? You know, how are you going to make money? Mm -hmm. What does your customer look like? What does your cost look like? What is going to be your roadmap? Right. Uh, how are you going to build up en enough resources in order to really run and scale your business? Right. Uh, what type of framework and, and structure does your business need to be in right. order to scale? Right. All those things are applicable, whether it doesn't matter if it's a J sleeve or if it's a widget. Right. And and I think that that is something that, you know, I, like I said, I, I have friends that are just you know, they, you know, want to be creatives. They want to, yeah. you know, start different things. And yeah. I think we often, and even myself, like, I think that we often forget that there are so many, you know, essentially what you're saying, so many things you can expand upon in your current expand. role that yeah. can help you w when you transition to take that leap of faith. Yeah. Because I think that, you know, you, you know, I feel like you're looking at it, you looked at it from an expansion standpoint. I feel like other people are just like, I just want to get rid of this position. I want to yeah. get out of this position. I don't want to, you know, I don't yeah. want to think about the skills I'm developing. They just want to just get out yeah. without actually, yeah. you know, up, like expanding, like you said, like yeah. expanding that skill set, seeing how whatever you're doing now, yeah. the next thing that you're going to do, it's, right. it's going to build upon it. You it's going to build those upon same it. skills, build upon each other. Yeah, you got to know and, and like know what your capacity is right. and test your limits. Mm. You know what I mean? Like just because you're doing, you know, one thing does not mean you can't do that plus another thing. Right. Right. It's all about time management, mm -hmm. uh, setting goals, having a strategy. Right. Um, and really, you like, again, you could do a good like like I coach and I train. Right. Right. I can. I'm still, you know, a business consultant. I still, you know, run the J Sleep. All of those things really come together just to describe like who I am. Right. Um, and all of those things benefit each other. Right. You know, like I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. uh, as well. So all those things come together. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the things like, you know, I, I do see that a lot. Like yeah. I see people saying they might get tired of one thing, yeah. not liking what they're getting from it and just drop it and want to do something else. Right. Um, and what I always kind of challenge those people to say is, all right, like, are you giving up too soon? Are you limiting your capacity? Are you essentially limiting your opportunity to learn? Mm. Um, and if you're limiting your opportunity to learn just because emotionally something may not have went the way you wanted it to mm. go, okay, challenge yourself and see if you this is now your moment to grow. That's one of the main messages. I because I in, in these type of conversations, my family is huge, mm. you know, so I got a lot of uh, net, you know, cousins that I refer to as nephews. Right. And as they were thinking about kind of going to college mm -hmm. and what they would do in college, it right. was kind of the message was, hey, man, you could major, you could minor, mm -hmm. uh, you could work in real estate while you're in class. There's a lot of things you can Indeed. do that Absolutely. will complement, you know, each other. So don't limit mm -hmm. yourself. You know, we as humans have the capacity to do a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people implode. And that's why it's a matter of what is your strategy? How do you manage your time? Mm -hmm. What goals and milestones do you set? Um, and how do you then work towards achieving those goals? 
and really try to take the emotion of failure out. Mm. You know, if you let if you approach a goal and you don't reach it and you fail, mm. the emotion behind that failure is either going to let you feel like it's a failure mm. or let you feel like it's a learning opportunity. Mm. And if you take it as a learning opportunity, then you really didn't fail. Right. So take the emotion out of it. Know what your capacity is. Test your limits and be laser focused on the type of person you want to be and the type of things you want to accomplish. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, speaking and just speaking on that, one of the things that um, when you talk about taking the emotions out of it, yeah. it's difficult for a lot of people, you know, because mm -hmm. I think that, you know, even myself, like I'm just being transparent, like yeah. there's certain things, certain mess ups, certain mistakes that I've made. Yeah. You know, um, I, I try, I beat myself up over it, you yeah. know, instead of just, you know, going, looking at it, like you said, as a learning experience, right. you know, it's like yeah. at, the, at the end of the day, you need yourself yeah. to get to where you want to be. So it doesn't Absolutely. make sense to like, don't damn, beat yeah, up. don't beat yourself up. Nah, you, Cause it's like, no one else. Yourself, exactly. like you said. Exactly. I'm going to tell you like this. First of all, yeah. If you're going to complain, nobody wants to hear it. Right. You know, nobody, right. you can complain. Right. But, but nobody, nobody else is going to want to hear it. <laughs> right. They don't care. Right. Uh, and then if you have goals that you want to achieve and you don't reach them, nobody else is going to care. Right. How are you going to feel about that? So you got to have, but a mental, especially what we learned over these past few years, oh, yeah. mental illness is a real, it's thing, a real thing. And you got to be able to have that like in check and right. be comfortable with who you are. Right. Uh, because if you're not, then uh, people can spiral before. Take, and I'm not yeah. saying that I haven't, yeah, yeah. you know, been down because there's been right. plenty of times of where course. I've been down. I think that's just the human, human element. Human, yeah. But when you take your time to, to meditate um, and reflect, mm -hmm. it just kind of creates more clarity as you move forward, mm -hmm. knowing that you're going to have that feeling again. Right. Right. So it's just, it's reps, mm -hmm. you know, like you play football, right. I play basketball. Right. You get the reps up of just developing right. mental toughness. Right. Absolutely. Um, how important is giving back? Um, I know that you, Man, you mentioned, you mentioned, huge. you mentioned that, um, you are, and I also saw that you were one of the board members of KYB, yeah. KD Youth Basketball. Tell me a little bit about that. Cause you speak about family, um, but, yeah. but just, you know, giving back, like how important it's is that important, for you? It's important, man. Yeah. Like I saw, so I, the reason why it's so mm -hmm. important to me is I wouldn't be where I'm at today if people didn't give back to me. So I look at it as paying for it. That's just how I was raised, right? right? But it's extremely important. Like, number one, I love the game of basketball. Right. And I love to watch, like, how it's developed. Develop, like, yeah. I'm nuts. I will watch a Hardwood Classic in black and white. Oh, yeah. And oh, watch yeah. a Hardwood Classic yeah. from Michael Jordan Game 6. Right. And watch a live game today. Mm -hmm. And go watch, you know, an eight-year-old basketball game. Right. So I'm right. just in love just with love the game. The game. Yeah. And so I like to see the development mm -hmm. of the game in mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. that love to play it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but like me, yeah, like part, a big part of who I am is mm -hmm. because people chose to give back to me mm -hmm. in a good number of ways. Whether it was coaches I had mm -hmm. at Little Dribblers, you know, YMCA's. Uh, whether it was we, I was I participated in this program uh, back in uh, Chicago land area. It was called the Alpha Lights. So there's a fraternity mm -hmm. there called you know the Alphas had a program called Alpha Lights, and they would just teach you a lot of different life skills. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I would go there, you know, some Sundays, some Saturdays, um, and so just you know seeing people give their time on a Saturday and a Sunday. Right to a 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 year old to teach them life skills, mm -hmm. they felt it was important enough for me to be able to contribute to society uh, and advance it forward. And I felt, and it, it just was ingrained in me, so I feel the same way. And so a lot of what we do as, at, you know, we're coaching, training, and volunteering, is we more so stress the life messages. Mm -hmm. Of course, we stress the X's and O's right. and skill development, right? but, you know, during a game situation or a practice situation, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's just a perfect opportunity to basically uh, let them know that, hey, man, you, you're going to need the type of mental toughness that mm -hmm. you have to get through this tough thing on the court mm -hmm. when you, you know, in, in, in regular everyday life. Um, so it's just important. It was just a part of mm -hmm. how I was raised and how I grew up. And so it should only it only makes sense and it's only fair right. uh, to those that raised me mm -hmm. to give back and continue uh, stressing the importance of being able to, you know, contribute to society and give back. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, for me, like growing up, like I didn't, you know, I started out playing basketball and yeah. a lot of my coaches, you know, became father figures. You know, mm. they were the ones who, 
you know, if, if you didn't, if you know, if your parents were out of town or yeah. needed a place to stay, they would be there. They would talk to you about, you know, just life and like what's going yeah. on, how to navigate certain things. So right. just having those people that have like gone through that, yeah. you know, and then, you know, having them, you know, give that wisdom to you. I, I agree. Like giving back is so important. Like that's yeah. why I try to, you know, whether it's, you know, my middle school, whether it's my right. high school, whether it's right. just people that, right. you know, I've been around. Right. I always try to like pass on that wisdom because- yeah. You know, it's priceless. It's like we wouldn't be where we are if we didn't we have, you know, all. coaches or just, you know, family members, friends, just people, yeah. you know, people that we look up to, mentors that just yeah. say, hey, you know, don't go down that way. Go this absolutely. way. You know, absolutely. so all of that is it it, it, it factors yeah. into a lot of our success. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As far as, I guess, getting into the intersection, we, we, were, we were talking about it offline, the intersection between sports, business and tech, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. For you, just from you know your vantage point, um, how opportunity rich yeah. is that is that space? Um, when we talk about you know our culture, it's you know huge. access, you know opportunities, man, like go huge. into that a little bit. Like what, huge, how, how how much like how is the you know what's the what are the opportunities out there? Man, the right. opportunities are, are are huge. Like right. so, you look at the sports market just in the U.S. There are about ten million youth athletes who play basketball. Wow. There's 450 million people in the U.S. who play the sport. Right. Uh, so the sport itself, just basketball, is the number of people who play is huge. The sports data and analytics market by 2024 is going to be at about $15 billion. Oh, wow. Right? Um, but when you look at, like, how the game has progressed, right. you know, technology just in itself and the development of it is just different. Right? right? And so the creativity, the way we see it is... The same creativity that you have on the court, right? And then you know the education that you get as you grow and you develop. The combination of those two with the entrepreneurial spirit is carves out another market. Mm. Like for us, we look at our business to say, you know, as we're looking to build additional product features, mm. right? How is that going to be done, mm. right? The way we think is going to be done, and how we structured our company is. We're gonna have, you know, a tech developer, mm -hmm. you know, a creative, a creative uh, agent, which is essentially like a, a, a basketball player, right. a person who has played the game exactly. and has developed a high level IQ for the game, and like data scientists. You put those three together, the amount of product features that are gonna be able to be developed from that that can then help the athlete achieve peak performance or help the organization protect their assets from injury prevention understand the competitive landscape are just endless, mm. right? And so the market is growing uh, and sports are becoming that much more attractive and a part of people's lives, especially in that younger age group because yeah. of the soft skills that you develop. Absolutely. Um, so the intersection of those three and then the entrepreneurial mindset, right? right. Like, you know, it, the, you, it's not the same. Like, so if you look at like a multi-generational workforce, mm. You know, that we're, you know, uh, traditionalists, baby boomers, mm -hmm. you know, Gen Xers, Gen X, millennials. Right. Mm -hmm. The way people look at things right. are just different yeah. across generation. Mm -hmm. And so based off that multi-generational workforce, you can say, all right, things are just different. Mm -hmm. You know, things are just different the way people approach things. And so when you apply, nobody really is going to want to go and sit at a desk from nine to five. No. That's just not the way that it is anymore. Right. Nobody's going to feel that they have to have a uh, corporate type job in mm -hmm. order to be successful, mm -hmm. right? They understand with access to technologies that are available now that they can start their own business from scratch just as a photographer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so based off of that, we see the opportunity to carve out a space where we will allow creativity to thrive and innovation mm -hmm. to thrive. Because right. as you are, I mean, think about it. You play basketball, right. I play basketball. Right. When you were a kid, the most fun I had was when I went around the corner to that basketball court mm -hmm. by myself and was just working on my game and come right. up with whatever new move I could possibly come up with. Right. That was me being creative. That was me being innovative. Mm -hmm. Right. And so now if you create a space right. for that person who has developed, you know, into an adult and even a space for those younger kids mm -hmm. to leverage that creativity, leverage technology, leverage data, the intersection of those the opportunities are just endless based off of the product that will get generated from the intersection of those three. So we're super excited about growing and scaling our company mm -hmm. because that's going to be the framework. That is the framework that we have mm -hmm. is that combination of 
the creative geniuses with the data science geniuses with the computer program geniuses in the same space just to see what they come up with <laughs> absolutely and and I, and I think what's great is that you can bring all of those representatives from those communities together I, yes. think, I think that's the that's the biggest yes. thing I think that there's so you know there's kind of so much overlap and we think that getting into tech getting into software is so like you know, it's such a, you know, being creative, being an yeah. entrepreneur, it's like what you do every day. Yeah, it and, You is. know, and you have, when you have, you know, companies, you know, similar to, to yours and, and just, you know, Synergy 7, whether it's the Jason, it's bringing everyone together yes, it from is. different communities. And I right. think that's the, that's the key. And that, that is you know, the key. It, because people think, I think that with so many opportunities out there, you know, whether it's, you know, in tech, um, you know, whether it's, you know, with the, on the creative side of things, we often, I think people on the outside overthink it. Yeah, you know, they overthink definitely. it. They might say things. They might they say things to kind of like you know dissuade them from um, from actually taking part. Like I, I was just back home not too long ago, and I, would, I have a younger cousin, and um, you know I was telling him I was like you know you sit you you know his, his mom's like worried about him and yeah. her aunt, and I was like you sit and play Fortnite. I was like you ever thought about getting into esports? Right. I was like you know they give scholarships to play the yeah, game. They exactly. Play, you know it, it went yeah. from like you talk about multi generational. Like it went from get get off the game. Yeah. If your grades aren't right, you can't play get the off game. the game. Exactly. And now we give scholarships. We give a scholarship for, for the game. For the games. Yeah. It's so different. it's 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 a, it's a different um, yeah, different approach to it. And we're excited about it. I mean just be the opportunity to create jobs. Mm. You know, like we are going to mm. create a substantial amount of jobs right just based off of our business model and our vision mm -hmm. and our approach for mm -hmm. how this intersection should work mm -hmm. so we're creating a community within our platform because one of the features in the J sleeve is a king of the court game to where if you have a J sleeve in Baltimore and I have one in Aurora right and we're both on the J sleeve platform we can befriend one another and we can compete through you know encourage each other through healthy competition okay. so we're creating a community within our platform but then as we think about growing and expanding and scaling the company and creating those jobs, we're creating a whole nother kind of community as well. Uh, so we're excited about it, man. Right. Like, like, like you said, man, the, the traditional way of doing things, right. there's still a space for it. Right. And there's also a space for innovation and creativity to disrupt right. the historical way that people even need to think about how they can go make a living for themselves and for their family. Absolutely. Absolutely. As far as, you know, the people have in your life that have been the most helpful, like who, yeah. who are those individuals like man. and how impactful were they, you know, as far as getting to where you are today? Man, that list is long, man. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, man. I mean, when they tell you it takes a village, right. yeah. I mean, it really does take a village, especially if you are a hard headed young kid right. like I was, oh, man. man. It yes. took it took a village. I mean, right. you know, honestly, you know, my mother, number one, Okay. Uh, you know, my mother was very very strict on doing what you were told to do, but know the reason why you mm -hmm. need to be able to do it mm -hmm. and understand and know your value, okay. right? And so uh, she stressed the importance in knowing your value to me very early on. Uh, she came to every single game. Uh, you know, I live, it was just me and her in the house. And so she would just escort me everywhere that she could. Right. And when she couldn't, you know, my uncle Mark Wood, who lived okay. up the street from me. Uh, and so he would take on the responsibility when she couldn't uh, to get me around to games and practices right. because he lived right up the road. Okay. You know, my father was involved right. as well in my development. And even though I didn't see him every single day, right. those moments that I did see special. him when he would come over on the weekends, yeah. every other weekend was extremely special. Yeah. And he also stressed the importance of, hey, here is what we know we need to do. Right. And under make sure you understand your value and always go after that which you want and that which you believe you deserve. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, I could go on like my my college coach, mm. uh, Coach Gillespie. I mean, he was very impactful because he was a totally different kind of dude that I had ever met. Mm. I mean, he would be in your face screaming <laughs> and hollering. Old school. Old, old school, school chew you out. <laughs> yeah, he'd chew you out. And it was totally different than right. anything I had ever right. experienced before. Right. And I'm like, man, this dude is crazy. Right. But being able to have um, a different type of approach mm. than anything that I had ever experienced mm -hmm. helped me grow. Mm -hmm. Whether I liked it or not, mm -hmm. it helped, you know, it helped me grow. Uh, so there's, you know, there's some definite, my high school coach, I mean, mm -hmm. the complete opposite. Right. I mean, Coach Davidson, he was completely different mm -hmm. than Coach Gillespie, but he was that very still 
uh, type person where, you know, he knows he's taught you and he gives you the space to go and fail. But also because of that, he gave you the space to learn mm. versus fail and then succeed. So he was very influential. Um, I mean, that list gets really long, right. but it was primarily family and coaches right. uh, that that grew, that helped me grow into the person that I am today. Uh, but I would say, you know, my mother, my uncle, my father, my two coaches, both in high school and in college. Um, I have a mentor as well mm -hmm. when I was working in this corporate okay. environment space. Okay. Uh, she's been very influential right. because she also stresses the importance of making sure you know your value mm. and also is a bit of an activist as well. Mm. Like uh, know your value, be able to speak up, um, you know, do your research, do your homework, have an inclusive type mindset. Uh, so those those people, I would say, definitely have had a had a big impact on who I am. And you talk about knowing your value. Like, what does that mean? You know, for just yeah. people, who you know, because I think that that's, you know. I, I, I have an understand I, I think I have an understanding yeah, of as far yeah, yeah. as just, you know, knowing you who you are, not being able to compare, you yeah. know, appreciating, you know, you know, 100%. your past. Like, but 100%. just kind of elaborate on that because I think that that's something that, you know, often gets lost in our yeah. journeys is understanding like who we are and what we bring to the table. For sure. You know, like if you spent yeah. time and effort to educate yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whether you actually have formal education right. or you took time <laughs> to educate yourself right. in another capacity. Right. And, you know, if you are a person with like an inclusive mindset that right. says you don't just have one particular vision, mm -hmm. you're open to understanding different people's mm -hmm. points of view. Mm -hmm. Right. So once you understand different people's points of view and you also know the time and effort and things like that that you put in. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, you start looking at data as well mm -hmm. in a number of different ways, depending on whatever your goal and your objective is you'll be able to get a feel for, okay, in this particular lane, mm. I believe my value is this, mm. right? And so when you're having those conversations with people about your value, if you don't have that holistic viewpoint and, and, and idea of yourself, and it's easy for somebody to tell you uh, something different right. and degrade your mm. value, right? And so that's, again, you know, what, what, what my family stressed mm -hmm. was academic and athletic excellence. The academic part always What's came first. first. Mm -hmm. And so you do your homework. You understand the landscape of whatever it is that you're operating with. Right. And based off of that and being honest with yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you can figure out, OK, I fit here. Mm -hmm. When somebody else says you don't fit there and you have a healthy debate about it. Mm -hmm. And you could spot out the reasons where, yeah, maybe they have a point and yeah, maybe they absolutely don't. Mm. It's on you to go and realize your value. But at the same time, if you're trying to achieve some goal mm. and you're being honest with yourself and say, you know what? I have more work to do. Mm. Then you still realize your value. You just got to increase it um, to go and chase that which you believe should be yours. Right. And so you got to put in the work early and often in order to have yourself prepared for the situations that you're gonna place yourself in to be successful. For sure. Um, I guess for you as a, you know, as a founder, like what yeah. is, what has been like the toughest challenge for you and just like how were you able to overcome that? Like what was your process to overcoming that challenge? Man, you know, I'm really not the most patient person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. Right, yeah, I, I am I am mm -hmm. not a patient person like mm -hmm. at all. And so when I was explaining how when I had the old, when I had the idea right. and I reached out to the guys on my team right. and they said that we could build it, right. I'm like, okay, well, let's go build it. Right. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Um, let's do it. Right. right. Now, let's do it and let's also do it with like extremely limited resources. <laughs> <laughs> but either right. way, like let's, let's go get, get it, done. it done. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, so for me, the, the hardest part, honestly, has just been you know, being patient to go through the process. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, knowing that we've been in bootstrap mode this entire time, right. primarily. Um, so just the patience, again, of just waiting until the time is actually right. Because right. you can try to force your hand in a good number of areas. Right. And, um, you know, when you do that, mm -hmm. you might get out ahead of yourself right. for something that you're not really ready for. Right. And so for us, developing new technology you can't really force your hand. Mm -hmm. You have to let it develop. Right. Especially when you're on bootstrap mode. Right. Like, I don't know about you, but I don't have a rich uncle that can give me about four <laughs> right, or five right, million right. dollars that say, right. hey, just go do, go do it. Right. So uh, it was a patience mm -hmm. of, um, 
you know, and it was a test to the mental fortitude for sure. sure. Yeah. I mean, it was a test. Like, you know, we're going to go and do this. It's going to take some time. We're going to bootstrap it. We're going to plan for it. We're going to have the strategy. Let's get there. Mm -hmm. uh, so the toughest part has honestly just been the patience. Patience. Um, but it's also been a learning opportunity, uh, you know, as well. So absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, kind of going into that, this is another, it's a follow up question. Yeah. Like what was it, what would be a piece of advice you would give your younger self? Like some, like, you know, oh, yeah. you know, Jeremy fresh out of, fresh out of college. Yeah. Like, you know, just, just when you first started off, like even back before that, like yeah. what's, what's a, knowing what you know now, like what would you tell yourself? Man, what I would tell myself kind of that younger version of me is don't be in such a hurry to grow up. <laughs> you know, honestly, I would go tell my younger self, like, slow down. Slow, go ahead and slow <laughs> drive down. Slow. Like, drive, drive slow, man. Right. Don't be in a hurry right. to grow up. Right. Um, the world is full with opportunity. Absolutely. Um, but you also need to relish, like, every moment. Like, right. don't try to go too fast, you know, too quickly. Right. Just slow down, like enjoy the day for the what it day, is, right? For what it is, like right. enjoy the day for what it is. Definitely need to make sure you're forward thinking and you have your strategy and you have your plan, but take the time to also enjoy the day. Mm. Um, is what I would tell my my younger self. Take the time to enjoy the day, uh, because a lot could potentially pass you by mm. if you're constantly in this rushing mode to just go and achieve that goal, achieve, achieve, achieve. There's nothing wrong with being an overachiever and attempting to be an overachiever, but at the same time, uh, take the time to uh, re-energize yourself and enjoy the day for the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and this is the the fun part of, of yeah. the sit down. My, one of my yeah. favorite, my, my favorite, is called wearing the jersey. So these are all like quick hitter, wearing quick hitter jersey. questions. Yeah. Okay. Quick, hit, quick hitter questions. Okay. Um, favorite sports memory of all time. Man, Kobe hitting 60 on his way out. Mm. His last game, the man dropped 60. I mean... Enough said. Enough said. <laughs> what do you got? Enough said. <laughs> we don't even got to go Enough further said. than that. Um, <laughs> if you could work with anyone in sports, who would you want to work with? Like, just in the industry, if it's an athlete, like, who, who would that man, be? Man, you know, if I would work with anybody, it would be LeBron. LeBron? It would be LeBron. Okay. LeBron is one of these, man, he's going to start an empire. Right. Well, he, I mean, he touched the, he, I mean, he's a he billionaire, billion. LeBron. Yeah, he, he, he had the billionaire, LeBron. Yeah, he's going he gonna to own a team. <laughs> right. He, hey, it would be LeBron. Absolutely. It would be LeBron. Um, the player that you patterned your game after when you were coming up? Man, I can't say I patterned my game after any one player because I like to try to pull bits and pieces Absolutely. from every player. But I would say like uh, Kobe, okay. T Mac, Jordan, and AI would be the four that I try to pattern my the, game after. The scorers, the scorers, man. Hey, <laughs> put the ball it's in the hole, bucket. Man. <laughs> it's, it's about buckets. It's about buckets. What would you say? <laughs> um, favorite pair of shoes of all time. Uh, the Kobe Hirachis, man. Kobe Hirachis. Yeah, two K four. Kobe Hirachis. Them boys was clean. Clean, yeah. I, I had a I had a pair of I had the I believe the red I had a pair of the the all whites. The all whites was dope. The red the red black the red black and white red black and white. Yeah, red black and white was dope too. Yeah, yeah, I had the yellow and black ones. Those boys were scratched the bumblebee joints. Yeah, Ooh. I love those. <laughs> <laughs> it was clean, clean. <laughs> uh, favorite jersey of all time. Ooh, man, I don't, it would have to be the Toronto. It would have to be Vince Carter's Toronto number fifteen number jersey, 15. man. Yeah, yeah, I mean the Raptors. It was just such a new look, right? Uh, it have to that be purple. It, the purple, <laughs> man. That boy was clean. It would have to be Carter's number fifteen. Carter's, jersey. yeah, Vince's sure. jersey. And also, to last question, uh -huh. who do you think should be a guest on the show next? Who should you have as a guest next? Well, coming after us. I was so I'd say go get Steph Curry if you could. That way, we can partner <laughs> and we for get sure, for sure, for sure. No, we we definitely we definitely will make that happen. Even though it's episode two, yeah. But but Jeremy, man, I appreciate it. Man, I'll, thank you. Yeah, man. absolutely. I appreciate you let having her, me. Man. Yes, let everybody know where they can get the J Sleeve, where they can you know follow you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go to uh, www.jsleeve.com. You can also follow us on Instagram okay. at the J Sleeve. Uh, feel free to email us, email us as well at info at synergy SVN, okay. which stands for seven dot com. All right. Thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right.